Felix is from a wine region in South Germany. People there work really hard for their money, and some even start building their own house at a very young age. But he noticed early on that he doesn't really fit in. He dropped out of school, later even quit his job with Mercedes, sold everything, and went on a road trip through 22 countries with his bicycle. He had his camera with him and came back with his documentary, Pedal the World. Mowgli was raised by an alternative family with only college graduates. She sang in the opera as a child, made it to honor roll during high school, but still she isn't really interested in a college degree or a crazy career. She loves to travel and turns all her experiences and influences during her trips into new songs. Actually, we come from two totally different worlds, but I think the repulsion of the traditional way is what unites us. We became a couple during my bicycle trip and moved to Berlin together afterwards. We had everything you could wish for. Um, we had a loft, we had us, we had friends, even a puppy, but still, we weren't happy. Usually everyone loves the creative Berlin, but for us it felt loud and dirty and we kind of had cabin fever. We knew we wanted to leave again, so we gave notice to quit our flat without even knowing what we want to do or where we want to go. We knew we wanted to travel again, make a new movie and get inspiration for a new album so that there would be a cool soundtrack again. We were never really passionate about cycling, so we needed a new mean of transportation. An RV was too boring, we didn't want to cycle again, and walking was way too slow. By coincidence, we saw an old American school bus online and decided to convert it to a loft on wheels. I'm longing for some change, love, so let's turn these walls to open space. And we'll bury our fears in the backyard after we burn them at the stake. What if none of it's gonna work out? Oh, I know it's gonna work out just fine. But if none of it should work out, we'll just throw my mood. We built our first room. Well, the bedroom is kind of room too, but um, we don't have a door to walk into. So um, now we built the toilet and it's teeny tiny, but you don't really need much space to go to the toilet. So we don't care. Above the city, the wind blows, we don't. We're here on a three-month visa and unfortunately it's running out, so we have to be at the Canadian border in two days already. 
We didn't really make plans, so that was probably a bit naive, but our motto is less planning means more flexibility. That's why we don't have a route as well. We want to get up in the morning and decide where we want to go and what we want to see that day. Let's see how it goes the first couple feet here. Let's see if the engine starts and then uh, off to Canada, I guess, right? Let's check. Oh, the dog. What do you come? We weren't allowed to film the border crossing, but everything went well and only took like five minutes. Flying the drone over the Niagara Falls is illegal too, but we did it anyway and it was definitely worth it. So today is a big day. First time using power, shore power, on the bus. So Sally and me did 90% of the electric by ourselves. So I don't know if it works, but let's see. That plug goes in here. Boom, and the other one goes in the bus. Should I try? Yeah. Ooh. Power works. So our first night in the bus was uh, pretty decent. It rained in everywhere. We are leaking in the bus and the ceiling everywhere. I gotta go up the roof today and fix the cracks and the leaks in the holes. I don't know, silicone it up or spray it up or, I don't know, fix it somehow. We got a second problem. The water heater is leaking, so we don't have any water in the bus. I don't know how to fix it. I'm not a plumber, but uh, I'm gonna look into it now. Two more problems to fix. After the 12 weeks converting the bus, we got used to setbacks. We try not to take it too serious, repair all the loose ends and are pretty stoked to finally start traveling. What I love the most about our school bus is that we are pretty much self-sufficient and live off the grid. We don't need any campgrounds whatsoever because of our solar system, which generates more than enough power to charge all of our devices. We also got a composting toilet and more than 40 gallons of fresh water. So basically everything you need for a night in the wild. because we never know what awaits us and there's always a little something that we can discover. Oh, I 
Today we met Robbie and Margaret, an older couple, at the end of a little dirt road. They showed us a typical Canadian tradition called ice fishing. In winter, when the lake is frozen, they pull a little house on the lake with a truck and dig a hole through the ice to fish. It's all insulated and with that stove, 40 below and you can leave the windows open. <laughs> it's so warm in here. This, uh, you can stay in your bed. And this lifts up and then you put a hole and you can fish from inside. <laughs> you can just like stay in bed and fish. Oh, well, you can, yes. Right. Yes, you can. Are these to drill holes through the ice? Oh, or? The ice oh yeah, these are ice augers, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The whole truck went through. The whole truck, yeah, you can see. It, it's just starting to come out here. This was all the pictures. And, and you saved the guy? Well, the guy got out okay, thank goodness, you know. This is fresh. Well, it, it's not fresh. It was fresh. It's pickerel and pike that we caught in the lac de Malac. And just fry it in a little bit of butter and garlic, and it's lovely. Awesome. And I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, if you like fish, it's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. We take you. <laughs> Good. Well, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. That's so nice. Oh, you're welcome. On our way to Banff, we can't really believe that they're supposed to be the Alps of Canada. Crossing Manitoba and Saskatchewan is rather boring because it's all flat and mostly covered in some kind of fields. But I'm pretty confident we will get rewarded once we get to the Rocky Mountains. Uh, two and one dog, if that matters. Oh, perfect. How long will you be in the park for? Um, can we buy that one seasonal pass? That, uh, what is it called, Sally? Do you know? Discovery you pass. Discovery pass. Yeah, so that's one six forty. Perfect. We absolutely love Banff, so we decide to stay for a while instead of just driving through. We really enjoy the break from traveling and go on day trips by foot with Rudy or with a bus to explore the national park. After a long day, we love to come back and enjoy our cozy home. It's breathtaking nature. I never saw something like that before. Awesome. It's five o'clock in the morning and we hope that if we get up this early, we're gonna escape all the tourists and more importantly, see some bears because we've had no luck so far.
Getting some rest in Banff was more than needed and also the highlight of this trip so far. But it's time to head towards Alaska. On the map it looks like Alaska is right next door to Banff, but in reality it's almost 4,000 miles detour, which we are more than willing to approach for a childhood dream like Alaska. We are kind of looking for happiness, right? It's called Expedition Happiness. And uh, when you wake up in the morning and open the door and stand across this here, this mountain, these trees and this river, that kind of is happiness, I guess. We don't have a routine. Our routine is waking up when the sun goes up and going to sleep when the sun goes down. No appointments, just living the life, living the moment. This is happiness for sure. Seeing and experiencing new things every single day is what we love so much about traveling. But we realize more and more it's traveling together as a family what makes us really happy. During Pedal the World, my first trip, I cycled pretty much alone. But happiness is the only thing that doubles if it's shared. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> As much as we love traveling, the driving part is more exhausting than we ever thought. The highways are full with road holes. I don't think I ever drove on roads this bad. There is stuff breaking in and on the bus, but the little rewards and adventures we experience every single day pretty much make up for it. Alaskan Highway in British Columbia, uh, close to Yukon and close to the border to Alaska. I'm standing in the middle of the road and there's no car for hours. Pure nature, no civilization, no tourists, just bears, moose and you. The kitchen in our bus is actually way bigger than the one we had in Berlin. It's stocked with everything I need to cook delicious meals on the road and it's quite luxurious to have a kitchen with you wherever you go. It gives me a really good feeling too because it makes me feel at home. So we are five miles away from the border to Alaska. We can almost see it, but there is one problem. Uh, we were in the States converting the bus for 90 days. On the 90th day, we left the States because we had our ESTA visa. Um, we left on the 90th day and thought we will just come back to Alaska and get another 90 days. That works, but Canada doesn't count as a country leaving the US. We don't really know what to do. We thought we'd just try it. So let's hope we meet someone really nice at the border and they just like say, come on in. Yeah, she thinks we'll get in. I am pretty sure we won't. <laughs> We 
made it. We're in Alaska. Um, luckily, I was right. Uh, the guys are really nice at the border. They asked us like a million questions, but that's normal. And yeah, they gave us eight weeks. Uh, so that's plenty of time to go through Alaska and see all the nice nature and everything. The boys are pretty knocked out. They're both sleeping. It was a hard day. Uh, we'll get some rest and then tomorrow we can go to Fairbanks. Our fuel tank is about 40 gallons and even if we only get about 8 or 9 miles per gallon, which is really not that great, we can still make it to almost 350 miles with a full tank of diesel. There's two reasons to celebrate today. Reason one, yesterday we passed a 10,000 kilometer um, from start to here, so 10,000 k driving so far. That's a reason to celebrate. And the second one is we are in Fairbanks now. Yesterday we got to the Walmart here. You can sleep here for free one or two nights. And uh, this is the Fairbanks is the start of our trip kind of. From Fairbanks it will always go south. So that's two reasons to celebrate. How do, how do you celebrate better than uh, with a dance? I would say check us out. So my two-step is pretty smooth, Sally, uh, I would say B minus, and Rudy, Rudy got that swag, you can't learn that. So off to the next 10,000 K. So we made it to the Denali National Park yesterday. The drive was epic. It was uh, one of the nicest rides I had in my life. We stay on the Teklanika campground, which is uh, on mile 30 of the road uh, in the park. And usually they stop you at mile 17, I think. But if you book that campground, you can go until mile 30. But you have to stay here three nights. So we got lucky, usually it's all booked out and five days ago we found out okay there's an opening we should take it so we took it and the ride it was all gravel and bumpy roads but mountains to the left rivers to the right it was uh, the best ride in my life the campground doesn't have water or power so we had to fill up our fresh water tank and dump the used water before for days where it's so cloudy that our solar panels don't get enough sun we have a generator and our stove and water heater run on propane. They encourage you to go wherever you want to go. And I want a little hill right now. There's mountains all around me. It's so beautiful. And I feel like the queen of the world. Alaska! We can check a new thing off our bucket list. 
waking up in front of the highest mountain in North America and drinking our coffee on top of the bus, looking at it. It's hiding a little bit behind all the clouds, but um, sometimes we can see it like every 20 minutes and it's really beautiful. On the Kenai Peninsula, we meet Eric and Kaylee, who live here and show us their beloved Alaska of the beaten path. It's always nice to meet locals because we get to know the country on a whole new level through them. Boondocking in Alaska is uh, the easiest ever. Uh, the nature is so endless here. There's roads leading to nothing everywhere. And then you find a spot like here, incredible, mountain view, a creek, and you just park in the woods, kind of. Alaska is perfect for that. Perfect boondocking country, country <laughs> state. Um, it's fun. It's really, really fun. We're driving to Vancouver next and are happy to finally be in a big city again. Rudy has been limping for quite some time, so we really want to go see a vet and get him checked because we're scared he has joint problems. Unfortunately, we were right, but before he has to have surgery on both elbows, we visit a dog beach so he can run around one last time. Rudy has been crying all night. He literally didn't even stop for like five minutes or so. I'm pretty scared that he's in pain. I mean, like they cut the bone and put metal in, but the doctor said it's normal that he's just hallucinating from the sedatives, but I just hope it's over soon and he feels better. We didn't get a single minute of sleep, all three of us. Um, and today we have to leave him alone actually to go to the embassy to get our US visa. But I think he'll be fine because I don't think it will take too long because we have an appointment.
We have just been to the US Embassy here in Vancouver. We applied for a tourist visa and uh, we've been to the embassy for like five hours. It was a craziness and finally we could speak to somebody and then we said, look, we want to go from Alaska to Argentina and uh, in an RV and we just want to go through the US and stay for 20 days and then we go to Mexico. And he thought we want to stay in the US forever. I don't know why, because I work online, I guess, because my company is in Germany and I'm not there. So he declined the visa. We paid 400 US dollars just to get declined. This is, uh, it's, it's the end. We can't fly to Mexico, leave the bus here. What are we supposed to do? We got the dog, we can't fly to Germany, we can't. Traveling is usually fun, but right now... We have to wait about three weeks to get another appointment at the US Embassy and it's really frustrating not to know if this trip is going to end or not. That's why my brother Marco and his girlfriend Sofia come over from Germany and they try to cheer us up a little. But again, there's something good about this forced break because Rudy really needs some time to heal without the daily life on the road. And it really worked on the second try. We were lucky and got a super nice lady at the embassy who believed us and our story. Of course we don't want to live in the US, we only want to travel through and are really happy that this trip is not going to end because of one grumpy old man. I don't even know how to start right now. I'm so angry and sad. Like, we finally got our visa the second time around when we went to the embassy and then we went to the border today and it didn't even occur to us that we could face any problems. We thought we can just pass through but we were very wrong. Like, we came there and they put Rudy in a kennel in the bright sun. It's like 30 degrees out there and he just had surgery and they didn't even give him any water. So we immediately decided to, to turn around. We thought we can come back another time, maybe early in the morning when it's not so hot. But once you apply to get in, you have to go through with it. So I begged them, I said like, he just had surgery, it's not gonna do any good. And they just didn't give in, they didn't want to. So we had to go in there and they questioned us again for illegal immigration. Like seriously, America, I don't want to stay in your country. Like, I don't know what part of that you don't understand. We're, it's all over the, the internet. Like you can look us up. It says we want to go from Alaska all the way south. So how are we staying in your country? But well, they asked us again after the embassy and finally they let us in after a couple of hours which was really hard and like a few incidents happened where one officer threatened Felix to put him in a cell because he got up to use the bathroom like seriously what's up why do you do that they made us feel so helpless like you're treated like a prisoner it's not fair and at the moment I don't even want to be here it's like the last place I want to be so I don't know what to do Rudy is seriously ill now. I think he has a heat stroke. He's vomiting every 10 minutes. He has diarrhea. He's really not doing well. And so we should be celebrating right now because we actually got into the United States, but we're not very happy at the moment. There are two ones in my chest. Only one breaks my heart. How to love them? Back on the road, we decide to skip Portland and Seattle, even though they're super cool cities. You can't do everything in one trip anyway, and it's important to do what feels good for you. After the long time in Vancouver, we had enough big city life and want to be by ourselves and in nature for a while, so we head for the Pacific Highway instead. The one I let breathe, or the one that lets air in.
many things go wrong, you kind of start to question why you're traveling in the first place because we weren't happy anymore at all. It's part of traveling though, I guess, and we learned that maybe happiness is to get over something like that, not to lose your optimism and pick yourself up again. That really helped us to appreciate the smaller things and get back into a routine again. We are exploring the Redwood National Park right now. And after staying way too long in Vancouver, it's nice to have nature again. Those trees are massive. I never saw something like that before. What you don't really think about before you start a trip like this is this crazy long bus with about 40 feet. You can barely move around in big cities. One wrong turn and you are in the middle of chaos. You don't really know how to get out and finding a parking spot or even a place to sleep is almost impossible. That's why we usually just drive through the big cities and focus on the nature spots. West Coast of America is really nice, really easy. Uh, just always on the highway one heading south. The sights are really nice. It's uh, the reward for all the bad parts. It's really like a roller coaster, this trip right now. It's up and downs, up and downs, but that's kind of what traveling is, right? So uh, I hope it stays like that. I don't want any bad experiences anymore. I want this.
shortly after Los Angeles, we decide to head east, so basically moving inland. After leaving LA, the nature starts to change drastically. Suddenly you are in the middle of the desert and you know this got to be the right way to Death Valley and Grand Canyon. Hoodie is okay. It's a dead fish. Hoodie. It's okay. It's wird alles gut. Alles wird gut. Ever since we went inland from LA, it's getting hotter every day and Rudy isn't taking it well at all. He overheated yesterday and broke down. He just ran to the bus and just his, his legs just collapsed and we had to carry him inside. So now I'm trying to cool him down constantly. So even when we're driving, I'm like right next to him and I'm putting water on him every five minutes and I even have a cool pack to cool him down. And I knew it would be hard with a mountain dog in the south, but I didn't think he would break down the first day it gets hot, so we really have to think of something, because I know it's, it's going to be hotter even if we go to Mexico or Peru, Costa Rica. I don't know if he can make it actually, maybe we have to send him home, but without Rudy, there is no expedition happiness actually. I don't want to go on without him, so let's hope we figure something out, because I don't want this to end now. Without a warning, the next setback hits us. Our road trip is on the line, and more importantly, Rudy's health. But we learn to concentrate on solutions rather than getting frustrated about the problem. And in this case, it simply means to walk Rudy in the morning and at night when it's not as hot anymore. Luckily, he gets used to it very quickly and doesn't mind the heat as much anymore after a few days. Rudy, what's that coyote? What's that coyote? In moments like these, I'm so grateful that we have each other, because I honestly don't know how I'd cope on my own. But in the good moments too, everything is more fun if you get to share it, and I think we can consider ourselves lucky that we're together 24-7 in such a small space and haven't killed each other yet. We just enjoy our time together. So, today we are at the most magical place we ever slept in our lives. We uh, went right on the street and for like two miles we needed an hour because it was like doo -doo 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 -doo. it was really shady. But now we are here, the sun just went down, the heat's gone, the dog's having fun. It is amazing, such a magical place. We are driving towards Death Valley and to get into Death Valley you have to cross the mountains of course and we have a new negative speed record uh, which is uh, 15 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour and well we got to deal with it, the engine is getting really hot so let's see, I hope it's not too long but we'll make it.
we uh, celebrated a little too early. We we're going down hills for like two miles and suddenly we s were like smelling fire. And I stopped and I couldn't stop. I barely stopped. The brakes didn't work anymore. And I got outside and the brakes were steaming hot, like melting. So we here at the side of the road, we'll wait for like 10 minutes. A policeman already stopped behind us to kind of guard us out here. Death Valley, for sure. After waiting about 20 minutes, the brakes finally cooled down and we were able to continue driving. Downshifting usually works pretty good, but even without braking, everything on the bus is getting really hot in Death Valley. anything like this before. The earth is just ripped open. It's sick. It's like a magical place. We're on the road since seven months now and only traveled through two countries so far. That's kind of crazy. In Europe, we probably would have been in every country by now. And while the nature changed drastically from glaciers to desert, the people and the culture stayed more or less the same, so we can't wait for new influences in Mexico. It's raining for the first time in ages. It was just really hot for weeks. Actually, it's still hot, but it's raining. And at first we didn't know if it's a good sign or a bad sign for Mexico and the weather, but then a really beautiful rainbow showed up, so we're taking it as a good sign now. We're at the border to Mexico at the moment, so I'm actually in between two countries. It was really nice so far, they were really nice people, they were really calm and really sweet to us. And they looked at the bus and everything was fine, so 
you're really happy and now Felix is off to get our permission and he's been gone for like half an hour now so I'm starting to worry at first I was like okay let's just have breakfast I made myself some breakfast actually um, and he's gonna be back soon but now he's not coming back and I'm getting nervous because either he's in line and then everything is fine or they have been talking to him for like half an hour and I just really I can't handle any more border problems I just want to be in Mexico and have fun again. Und? Ja, wir haben alles. Haben oh, wir haben alles schon? Ich glaube schon. Ich, ähm, ich glaube, wir wurden abgezogen. <lacht> Musst du doch irgendwas sagen? Ja. Und sie hat die ganze Zeit gesagt, das sind Pesos. Und jetzt steht da aber Dollar. 1129 Dollar. Nee, das kann nicht sein. So viel können wir nicht gezahlt haben. Mexico, Mexico. Of course, they didn't screw us over. The currency sign is just the same as the one in the US, so I thought it's dollars. So we just made the first 80, 90 miles in this country. The people are nice, the food is good. The only problem is the roads. The worst roads you can imagine. Worse than everything I ever experienced. Everything in the bus is breaking. So I don't know how much longer we can go, but uh, this bus is definitely not made for Central and South America. Uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, we're pretty stoked to be here, so we don't care about the bus, we're happy. We're back in no man's land again and I'm sure we're the only tourists around but it's kind of nice because the bus draws a lot of attention so locals come and talk to us all the time. On the first evening we get invited for dinner by two young girls and are super impressed by their hospitality because it's our first day in Mexico and already we're getting our first bottle of tequila. Casa, no, Casas Grandes. No, Casas Grandes. Casas Grandes is like a pueblo. But how do you say it? Nuevo Casas Nuevo. Grandes. Nuevo uh -huh. Casas Grandes. Oh. Yes, welcome <laughs> to Mexico. <laughs> we're really, we're Without really pot. Without pot. <laughs> <laughs> Just with tequila. <laughs> yeah, no weed. <laughs> They don't have time the next morning, but want us to see their hometown, so they send a school friend who shows us the chili factory of his dad. <laughs> they break really easily. They break, so okay. Yeah. Well, my hair is very soft, so. Just oh, oh, all of it? All of it. Niagara Falls. No. North Carolina. North Carolina. Oh, okay. Canada. Alaska. After visiting the chili factory of his dad, Riley wants to show us one more highlight of the area. We are driving about five miles to get to a farm a friend of his dad owns. On our way, we passed chili and potato fields. Supposedly about 90% of all potato chips in Mexico are being produced here. Is that that bad? Mm. Just put it on your tongue, don't bite it. 
pretty hot. Is it hot? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Is that chili or jalapeno? That's jalapeno. Jalapeno? Chile jalapeno. Ah, okay. Chile jalapeno. Jalapeno. Oh. It's pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. It's not, you know, I'm still alive. You're all good. Once we get to the farm, we are kind of freaked out. There's several mansions we aren't really allowed to film. There's a Boeing used as a private jet. And then there's these tigers in really small cages. Feels really weird being here, but we don't want to be rude and question the circumstances or even the hospitality. Second day in Mexico, our taco number 412, I think. And we're pretty full. And now it's time for Rudy's first taco. Rudy taco. Achtung, bleib. Frei. Frei. Du willst das Brot nicht? Okay. <lacht> So two days ago we saw the tigers and this dude with a, with a lot of land and he had employees like thousands and stuff and uh, we were like okay this is not normal to have tigers and now somebody told us that dude is famous he is the number one narco narcos narco drug dealer uh, Pablo Escobar of Mexico whatever and um, he's huge here. Everybody knows him. He, uh, he gives people jobs and everything, but still he makes his money with drugs. So yeah, it's not normal to have tigers. And he was like, oh, don't film everything. So now we know why. We're kind of shocked. And uh, you never know who you meet in Mexico. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Good times. <laughs> in Jimenez, we got lucky again, finding a good sleeping spot for the night. A really friendly hotel manager invited us to park the bus in his huge parking lot and even offered us a room. But we are fine with staying in the bus. After inviting us to eat in the hotel, he gave us a little tour through his beloved city. She? Alemania. Alemania. Sí. Sí. Algún día vamos a ir. Voy a mandar a este hijo ven. Hijo, saluda los muchachos. When locals give you a tour, you get to places where there was probably no tourists before you. That's how we get a totally unfiltered view of how the life there really is. We don't question how they keep their animals here in Mexico. Kind of like the tigers before, but once you get to another country, there's other rules than in Germany or in the US. We need to respect these circumstances and be thankful for the hospitality here. There's 20 soldiers and two tanks outside the bus. We've just been to a little tour around the city Jimenez. And we came back, the dog was in here. And those tanks are next door. I'm scared as hell. They don't talk to us. They all got 20 guns in their hands. Like, this is war. 
I don't know if they're good guys or bad guys or if they want to help and protect us or take us as like a hostage. Uh, I'm scared. I mean, I'm shaking bad. This is war. I don't know what's happening. They don't talk to us. Uh, second day in Mexico in uh, Jimenez and uh, this happens. Uh, but uh, I'm still positive, I guess. <laughs> We uh, moved the bus last night. The army didn't leave for two hours. We didn't know what's going on. So after an hour, no, after like two hours, we took the dog, went outside for a walk. And when, once we came back, I'm still nervous. Once we came back, they ran. They ran off, took the drugs and left. So I was like, what is going on? Is this like a scam? Did they put like a ton of uh, cocaine underneath my bus and the next day they're gonna stop me and say I'm a truck dealer or whatever so I checked everything nothing so we don't know what it was maybe they were just nice and wanted to protect us but they didn't really speak to us it was weird so they're gone now we moved the bus last night because we said oh look let's get out of here first the narco the drug dealer now the army what's what's coming next Mexico I uh, took a lot of free kicks in my life. None of them in Mexico yet. None of them this important. Good goalkeeper, good field. I'm positive. Sometimes. I'm longing for some change, love, so let's turn these walls to open space And we'll bury our fears in the backyard after we burn them at the stake What if none of it should work out? Oh, I know it's gonna work out just fine But if none of it should work out, we'll just bow my Louis Bye bye. Oh, it ain't really falling with a safety net. Taking a flight is worth the crash. I want to start a new to tear down these mountains so we can see. So we are in uh, San Luis Potosi now. It's so hard to explore a city with the bus. You never find parking. And we just found this spot. It's in front of the Hilton Hotel, I think. This is the Hilton. Dear management, I'm sorry. I know we're not allowed to park here, but we'll be back in one or two hours. Uh, we just want to explore the city real quick. And uh, I hope you don't tow us away. Please don't. Um, we like your country. We like your hotel. So. Be nice to us. Ni 
Didn't get towed quite the opposite. We got a little message uh, under our door. That's always really nice from someone who recognized us over Facebook and just said something nice. Mexico's full of surprises. In the middle of the road, Miguel stopped our bus and asked us a million questions like where we are from, what we do, where we go and whatsoever. He was really interested in our story and without further ado, he invited us in his house here in San Miguel de Allende. We got to know his family and everything felt really special for us. Kind of like home, I guess. We get along really great and after a little walk with Rudy, we decide to head towards the city to get some dinner together. Take like soft, you're gonna pinch. And you have to uh, wait a, until it's clean? No, now you can eat this. One. Oh, now you can eat that? <laughs> Let's go for a minute inside Mira Mamma Mia restaurant. Mamma Mia? Let's go. Cochinita pibil. Cochinita pibil. Cochinita pibil. Pequeño pedazo. Señorita. Entonces como. Oh, claro. <laughs> tiene, que, tiene que estar lleno. <laughs> No, muy bien. Mucho limón. Muy bien. Sí. Estaba pensando en el chongo. Te iba a preguntar si recordabas cómo se llama. Chongo. Muy bien. Se mueve mi chongo. Se mueve tu chongo. No. No, no, no. No, no, no. How do you say in, uh, in German? This? Tut. What? Tut. 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 The city is really beautiful too, so we decide to stay for a few days. These short breaks from traveling are super relaxing. It's important not to move every single day, otherwise you get stressed out pretty quickly. Mexico is the perfect place for that, because we make so many friends and meet families that make us feel at home. Mexico in general is such a beautiful place. The colorful houses, the people, the food, it definitely has become one of our favorite countries in the world. Primero tacos y luego churros. Un poco de lima. Que convirtieron en su casa de Alaska a Panamá. 
We just drove off the highway and went to the first restaurant we saw and here in Mexico you get one lunch in a lot of restaurants so you can't really choose and there's no menu so we just ordered what they have and we didn't really understand what it was so you never know what you're gonna get and today was really yummy we really loved it and let's hope our stomachs like it too <laughs> Back in Germany, we mostly eat vegetarian or sometimes even vegan. When traveling, this totally changes. We always try to get to know the culture as it is and how do you get to know a culture better than through food. That's why we usually eat wherever the locals go and we never got disappointed by that strategy. It's uh, similar in uh, Nor Norway, Sweden, Norway, Sweden, and Europe, North Europe. Ah, it's similar. Todo el norte de Europa. So we just wanted to go on a little break here on the gas station. I walked around the bus to check everything because the roads are so bad and our water tank just fell. Everything just ripped out. Lucky the PEX lines are still fine. One more bump and everything's gonna rip out from the inside. I don't know what to do, it's like 100 degrees. I don't have any tools to fix this. Can't be any worse, can't be any worse than this. We just met a uh, truck driver, no word English, our Spanish is very little. So I guess he said follow me and we are doing that right now. I hope he's doing, taking us to a mechanic. As a kiddo in Germany, your mom usually teaches you not to trust or talk to strangers. We usually trust people wherever we go and never had a bad experience. I'm pretty sure most people wouldn't have followed this shady looking truck driver. While the mechanics ponder how to fix the water tanks, I kind of tried to thank the guy without really speaking Spanish that great. But I'm pretty sure he understood most of my Spanish and gestures.
After about 10 minutes and like five bucks, we are back on the road. And for the first time since Los Angeles, we are heading for the ocean again. Here in Campeche, one of the biggest national holidays is coming up. 80% of the Mexican people are Catholic, and on the Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead, they prepare beautiful tables for their deceased loved ones with food and drinks they liked. <laughs> Er will ums verrecken nicht in den Bus. Er hasst den Bus. Rudi, komm auf. Komm auf. Rudi. In the beginning, Rudy loved traveling. But by now, he hates that we're driving every day. He got used to the heat, but he's missing a daily routine. And after all this time on the road, we started to notice that we're kind of feeling the same. In the beginning, we were excited to experience new things every day, but now it's often overwhelming. Good. In Tulum, we allow ourselves a little luxury and rent a hotel room with AC for a couple of days. Unfortunately, the break comes too late. Both Rudy and Felix get really ill, and while Felix recovers after a while, Rudy only gets worse. Yeah. Okay, right now, Rudy uh, has already a diagnosis of Giardia, so he is in, in treatment right now. Okay. He's having a hard part because uh, he's got gastritis. Settle down a little bit because all the stress of the traveling and all these medical conditions are are being like a little little rough to him. Too much. Too much. A little bit too much, and especially because he's really picky with the food, and he's already being treated by by yeah. other diseases. I honestly don't know what to do right now. We've been to the vet again today. Well, we've been yesterday and they think he has a tick-related disease. And yesterday she wasn't too worried because his temperature was high, but he didn't have a fever. But then when we came back from the vet, I gave him the medication that she gave to us and um, he vomited it. Like after 10 minutes, he had food and he vomited it all out. And um, so at first I thought maybe it's just the heat or food related or I don't know um, 
and this morning I gave him food again, tablets first, food, and then he vomited again. It just takes like a minute and then it's all out again, all over the floor. And so we immediately went to the vet again and this time she was really worried. So I'm worried now too because at the vet he was really shaky and now he has a fever. He has 40 degree fever now. And um, she said if he doesn't get better by tomorrow he has to go to the hospital. And I just can't imagine him going to the hospital because he's so scared when he's not with us. I don't think he can ever go to the bus again. I honestly, I'm scared that he's going to die if we go all the way to Panama. <laughs> We're trying to be gentle. <laughs> it's obviously it's not going to like it because this is going to constrict the arm. It will make him numb. Oh. And maybe the most thing he won't like. It's okay, it will be last thing to do this. Mm. Good, good. gerade zu uns gesagt, dass wir nicht weiterfahren können, so wie er in seinem jetzigen Zustand, wenn wir jetzt weiterfahren, dann stirbt er. Er hat nämlich schon angefangen, ähm, sich so einen Platz zu suchen zum Sterben und sich zu verstecken. Dann hat er aufgehört zu essen, das ist das nächste Zeichen. Und sie hat gerade Fieber genommen, das Fieber geht nicht runter, deswegen ist er jetzt hier am Tropf und ähm, will nichts essen. Und, äh, der Arme, der bereitet sich quasi aufs Sterben vor. Wir schaffen natürlich, dass er nicht stirbt, ne? Wir halten dich davon ab, hm? Aber ähm, wir können nicht weiterfahren. Rudy's health is our priority, so we decide to fly home. In the beginning, we're really sad that we have to stop the trip, but we quickly feel that it's the right thing for us to. Moving every day became too much for us, and we forgot to ask ourselves what makes us happy. At the end of this long journey, the answer is quite different from what we expected. We had the great freedom to travel the world, and now all we want is settle down. On the upside, Rudy got ill in a really beautiful place. We made good friends here and there's plenty of things to do so we can enjoy the last few days of our trip.
<laughs> we asked ourselves pretty quickly what's going to happen with our beloved bus and had the neat idea to raffle the bus to one of our online followers. Lautaro. Lautaro. Camille is coming. <laughs> Camille? Camila. Nice. Camille. Camila, three, three weeks left, so... Nice. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> Lautario. Muy bien, amigo. Toca <laughs> bocina. Woo! Sí, sí. just be happy when the bus is gone but um, now I'm sad because it's kind of hard it's like driving off in front of me and we build everything with our own hands so it's it's kind of sad to let go the most beautiful thing about this trip is that we found friends for life without Miguel and his family we would have collapsed at the airport because they didn't want to take Rudy on the plane but with their help, everything kind of worked out and we can't wait till they come over to Europe to visit us. Do you think we can still make it boarding? Yeah, right? We good. This girl is my supervisor. <laughs> it's Christmas today, and we told no one that we're coming home. Everyone thinks we're still traveling, and our families have no idea that we're going to surprise them today. Oh, Lass ihn los. Oder er kommt. Hallo. Verarsch. Rudi. Rudi ist schon Wo sind die Kassen weg? Weiß nicht, wo die sind. Keine Ahnung. Hello. 